Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Muslims in Ramadan tend to want to give zakah. Zakah is the annual um, charity or contribution that people give to those who are needy, Dr. Shabir. And, and there are a bunch of different categories of zakah recipients. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what zakah is, what's its purpose, um, and who do we give it to? Yeah, so uh, zakat uh, is an Arabic word, which means uh, purity, and uh, it uh, uh, corresponds to sadaqa uh, for in, in the Hebrew tradition, which means justice. And uh, it, we have an Arabic word as well that uh, is closer to sadaqa, which is sadaqa in Arabic, yeah, which means charity in general. Um, in, in the Islamic tradition, there's a differentiation between charity in general and zakat in particular. Zakat is thought to be the obligatory portion, and sadaqa is more general. It could include that obligatory portion, but it could uh, also be, and usually they, it, it, it doesn't include the obligatory pro portion, and they're thinking of Muslims in general, but technically it does. Technically, hmm. when the Quran speaks about sadaqa, it's not often distinguishing between zakat and, and sadaqa. Like it looks like it's all one and the same thing. So in any case, uh, sadaqa is more general. And it could, could include the zakat, which is the obligatory portion, but it's even over and above that, which is charity. Now, the, the obligatory portion, this is thought to be 2.5% uh, uh, of one's net liquefiable assets uh, at the end of one calendar year. Uh, well, calendar year, we mean the Muslim calendar. So uh, it goes from, you mentioned Ramadan. A lot of people pay in the month of Ramadan because that's the one month of the Muslim calendar that most people are familiar with. And everybody's aware that, you know, we're in Ramadan, but uh, other months come and go and one could not remember. Like when did it, you first start to accumulate the wealth? Mm -hmm. So so let's uh, step back a moment and say so that- So can't you say like from January to December? Uh, it, then you'll be, you, you'll be like 11 days late. Uh, if you just go by a, by a, a date within the solar calendar, mm. uh, because the, the obligations were established with the lunar calendar already in vogue. That's what the earliest Muslims used, the lunar calendar, which is about 354 days in length. So now if you have your annual zakat payable date as a date within the, uh, uh, the solar calendar and the date doesn't shift, then it would mean that you would be paying 11 days late. Mm -hmm. And if you add up all of those 11 dates, you might eventually find yourself missing a whole year, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of the, the accumulated uh, uh, lateness. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, I, I said it's from a, a year from when you first started accumulating, the, the, or when you first accumulated the, the wealth. And by that, I mean that there is a sort of a, like a poverty line, a cutoff level that is established in our traditions. That uh, poverty line was, um, uh, or you can say the zakat payable line. But when does one become a, a, a zakat payer or, or a potential zakat payer? Is, is when one accumulates uh, three ounces of gold or uh, 21 ounces of silver. So that, those were the measures in those times because there were gold coins and silver coins. So if you had so much uh, in terms of gold coins, you had so much in terms of silver coins, you were deemed to be like, basically you've crossed the poverty line, but you don't have to pay zakat immediately. You would have to pay one year from the date when you first reached that level okay. uh, of, of accumulated wealth. Uh, so, so what is it compared to our standards well, now? Well, compared to our standards nowadays, if we were to buy three ounces of gold, it will probably cost about $8,000. And uh, if you were to buy uh, 21 ounces of silver, it'll probably cost about $600. Now, of course, there's a lot of difference between 8,000 and 6,000. So you can yes. well imagine that one person has uh, gold, uh, like say two, two ounces of gold, and that's probably worth about, let's say $6,000. And another person has uh, less than 600, uh, uh, six, six, uh, sorry, 21 ounces of, um, of silver. And uh, I was going to say 613 grams, 612 grams. Uh, so one has like, let's say 500 grams mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of silver. One has like, let's say six ounces of silver. Um, well, uh, the, um, or seven ounces of silver. Let's go with seven ounces. So the, the one who has seven ounces of silver worth uh, $600 has to pay zakat. But the one who has 
uh, two ounces of gold worth six thousand dollars wouldn't have to pay zakat. Hmm. So uh, the this, how does that this, work? This oddity has resulted from the shifting prices of gold and silver. Okay, and and what this illustrates, Sophia, is that uh, there is a need for uh, Muslim scholars to step out of the box of traditional thinking, and they have to think in terms of goals and and broader objectives, and and they have to give rulings accordingly. As long as they keep perpetuating these standard and classical rules as they are without any adjustment for our current situation, they, they leave people with this odd feeling that something is not really right here. So going back to the original situation and the objectives and so on, obviously uh, the objective is, as we do with uh, taxes in, in modern systems, uh, to let the, the rich pay uh, for the social services uh, that that will go towards the protection and the maintenance of all members of uh, society, including and especially the poor. So some things have to be done at the com communal level. Uh, you can't, uh, we can't expect you to build the road from your home to a, to a Muslim Media Hub, uh, and and for me to build the road from my home to the Muslim Media Hub. You'll be build, build, building one road, I'll be building another road, and how can we afford to build our own roads, right? Mm -hmm. But if uh, if the society at, at at that level were to build the roads with the contributions from everyone able-bodied or uh, everyone who's able to contribute to that, then everyone will use the road, whether they're coming to Muslim Media Hub or they're going somewhere else along the way or something like this, and then, um, you know, everyone benefits, right? And then those who do, are, are not uh, able to afford certain amenities in society, like the use of the library or, you know, or something like this, then uh, such a, a service can be available for free, funded by those who are paying the taxes. Uh, so, so too, the, the zakat uh, would have functioned and did function in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was collected at the communal level. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent his collectors to uh, the farmers, for example. So if a farmer had 40 sheep, the tax collector would take one. And so the rate was established as two and a half percent. It's one out of 40. Uh, but did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, intend this to be like the, the, the standard rate for all time, all places, in all situations? It's hard to, to imagine that this is what he intended. Uh, and when we speak about gold and silver, uh, were, these were the measures that I mentioned in tradition. As long as scholars just stick to that mention, uh, and and you know they, they 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 find it hard to include other precious metals. Hmm. So if you talk about diamonds and uh, other other stores of wealth, uh, they, they they don't want to go there because it's not mentioned in the tradition. They're sticking with saying uh, gold, gold and silver. Uh, but of course, nowadays we have our stores of wealth not only in gold and silver, but also and and may, uh, uh, to a large extent in cash. And so it was necessary for them to start thinking about cash as a separate uh, entity and then start to think about, you know, giving the zakat based on cash as well. But still there's hesitation when it comes to diamonds and when it comes to precious metals. So, as I said, we have to think out of the box. Another way in which we need to think out of the box, Sophia, is that uh, that rate that was established as two and a half percent, just by inference, it's not that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, okay, your zakat should always be two and a half percent, like I confidently asserted, two and a half percent, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, never said two and a half percent. He just it directed his tax collector to go and take one sheep out of the 40. Oh, okay. Uh, and because obviously, for whatever reason, we don't know his full thinking at the mind, but think about our present situation. In most countries uh, where uh, taxes are levied, a, a higher rate is levied on, on persons of higher income, like it's a graded system. Uh, because obviously, if, uh, if a person is earning, let's say, uh, um, you know, a minimum wage, uh, to tax that person at, uh, you know, let's say 30%, that, that's hard enough. If, if you tax a person who is earning millions at the same 30%, uh, the, the impact and the burden of the tax is not felt the same way. Like the person who is earning the minimum wage is burdened by the 30%. The one who is earning millions is not burdened by the 30%. I know the greed is always there and they, they want to pay zero. And a person like the past president of the United States will do everything he can to, uh, you know, not pay anything, mm -hmm. right? But um, the burden in terms of like, when we look at it conscientiously uh, and objectively, we see that the burden is less. And therefore, we can charge a higher rate of tax on the on the well-to-do. 
Um, but if we say 2.5% across the board, it means everyone, rich or poor, will pay the same 2.5%. So the impact on the burden of the tax is, is felt more on, on the lesser wealthy uh, than, than on the more wealthy. So that, that shows that there has to be a, a, a system and there has to be a thinking outside of the box to say that, okay, aside from the, uh, from the 2.5%, there can be a larger tax on, you can call it whatever you like, but in a society um, run by and governed by Muslims, you can say that in addition to the zakat, 2.5%, you could have a larger tax uh, that that is levied on on the rich. So, to whom can zakah be paid, Doctor Shapiro? Yeah, the Quran in Surah Nine, verse number thirty, uh, delineates eight uh, categories of recipients, uh, including the the poor, the needy, uh, those who are traveling; they happen to be wayfarers, those who are uh, burdened by debt, those who are enslaved, and we can pay to get them released. Fi uh, the the you know, in the way of God, which is a broad category. Uh, we can, uh, the persons who are employed in collecting and distributing the zakat uh, can be paid out of that uh, collected funds as well. Uh, so that shows we have broad scope and a wide variety of uh, very uh, legitimate uh, uses in which the zakat funds can be expended. Thank you for sharing that. Oscar. You're welcome. Check it out, everyone, our brand new studio space. It's a work in progress and it's all thanks to your support and love. This Ramadan, help us raise $100,000. This will help us develop the studio further and buy the equipment we need to develop more programs like this one. Visit our website, muslimmediahub.com.